without training is not. Oh, without training. Well, legal, not legal. Yeah, exactly. Well, of course. Um, and this was several years ago too. And yeah. So yeah. He, yeah. So, um, they, so when I arrived, he was motionless on the floor. He was not responsive. Mm-hmm. He was not having a seizure. He had psychogenic seizures by this time as well, which further complicated. heightened yeah. their notion that he was using seizures to manipulate them. So I knew he wasn't having a psychogenic seizure at the time because when he has a psychogenic seizure, his eyes, his eyelids flicker uh-huh. and his lips pierce together, almost uh-huh. like he's trying to speak or move or communicate, but oh, he wow. can't. And so he was not doing that at the time. He was motionless, perfectly still, as if he was under anesthesia. Mm-hmm. And so I, I asked, is he sleeping? I wanted to ask if he was breathing, but I had already looked at all that. So I said, is he sleeping? And they're like, oh, yes, he's exhausted. He was fighting with us. And I'm like. So you walked in and he's on the floor. Yeah. Between gym. two double doors, not the gym. They, oh, had, so they, they, had, they got him out of there. They got, got him out, out of the but, gym. They had grabbed him by the hoodie, the back of his hoodie, and drug him mm. off camera where I couldn't see what happened. So when they grabbed him, he was standing, clapping, cheering, mm-hmm. waving. You know, he was not a threat to anybody. Mm-hmm. He was in enjoying the, the game. Vicinity, enjoying the game, waving to his friends. And the principal lunged at him and grabbed him by the hoodie. And what happens when you grab the bear by the hoodie? <laughs> oh, boy. You know, or the bull. You grab well, the bull yeah. by the horn, so They're to gonna speak. They're going to fight back. You're gonna, yeah. So I have no doubt he fought back, mm-hmm. but. Well, of course, I don't know, you know, he should never have been put in that position. When I, when I got there and started talking to him, trying to communicate with him, he was climbing the wall with his feet and yelling. He was having a heart attack. I'm having a heart attack. I need an ambulance. Give me a, give me an ambulance. I need a heart attack. I'm having oh, a heart attack. Kid. And so, you know, right then I was like, I don't know what happened here, but it's not good. It's <laughs> you not know? good. Oh. Because this child doesn't complain ever. If his kidneys are bothering him, he ties pillows to his back. <laughs> really? He doesn't. Oh, yeah. Oh. He, he doesn't vocalize ever that he's in pain or distress. So uh, I knew this tough. was not good. I yeah. knew this was not good. Whatever happened uh. was not good. So we did finally get him up and walking to the front of the building. Mm-hmm. And I had been told there was a police officer on the way. I didn't know why the police officer was on the way, but the officer met the principal and I stayed with that substitute teacher and we had finally isolated that he said his legs were having a heart attack. So his legs were obviously cramping Mm -hmm. pretty badly. And so I said, why do his legs feel like they're having a heart attack? And he says, well, he's going to feel like he was hit by a truck. I'm 200 pounds and he was lifting me off of him. (sighs) And I'm like, okay, uh, I don't know which people did here, but this doesn't sound uh, right. So, um, the principal, then the, the officer approached us because we had just gotten him calm back down. You don't need an ambulance. You're okay. You're breathing. You're good. You know, yep. I probably should have taken the ambulance, but, um, <laughs> the officer approached him and immediately got in his face and was like, Matthew, look at me. You know who I am. I know who you are. And, and I'm like, okay, why is he doing this? You know, right. Well, right. You know, he, it's like he's tried to provoke him and I put my finger in that officer's face oh and I said if goodness. you don't back off you're going to make this worse and I hurry up and pulled my finger back because I realized <laughs> what I did <laughs> totally <laughs> instinctual though I'm sure oh I I think so you're right on autopilot um, yeah yeah oh yeah and so I said I'm taking my son to the doctor now mm-hmm. we'll be in touch and so I took him to the hospital or urgent care and got mm-hmm. him checked out and they diagnosed him with contusions on his thighs from oh. the whatever happened. He said they kneeled on his thighs and held his him. hands over his head. Mm. So he was able to describe what had happened at least. And I called the police station after we got home because mm. I felt horrible. That's not me to challenge a police right. officer, but I called the police station and said, I would like to speak to the officer that was sent to the school and and they had no record of a call are you serious yeah so they had an officer on speed dial oh my goodness (laughs) so i don't know what the goal was there but 
they uh, I, they had no <laughs> idea what to do, what how to manage him, even yeah. though you'd given them all the tools. Well, tried to give them the tried tools. Tried to give them yeah. the tools. So we did not go back to school after yeah. that. It was it was right before Thanksgiving break, and we had met with the principal the next day, and and he says, "Well, we're not going to take any disciplinary action against him." And I'm like, "You think? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't. Why would you take this? You know, <laughs> right. what, did he, what did he do? I don't understand. You should be yeah. taking disciplinary action against your staff and yourself, so, but yeah, I didn't know because I didn't. I wasn't getting the full story, and I yep. wasn't getting. How terrifying though for you too. Details. How were you managing that? Just at the time, at I time. don't know. I Adrenaline. was on autopilot yeah. and in Louisiana, it's a one party consent state. So I recorded conversations. I took a recorder yep. with me. Yep. I took a, I took a witness with me, mm-hmm. um, who happened to be a police officer. They didn't Did know you? it at the time. So. <laughs> And he Smart just came lady. in and he didn't say a word, but I did let him know that I was recording and everything. Cause I'm like, if you're not a part of the conversation, I feel like I need to let you know. So, uh, and, and so every time they, they told me little details about what had happened, the details kept changing just in that time in that office in a few hours. Oh man. Little, little details. There's inconsistencies. Just, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So, I knew that they were covering something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I asked for my restraint report because they had, at this point, they had never disclosed that he had been restrained. Mm-hmm. I finally just had to say, so this is where you restrained him. And they were like, uh, you know, wow. you hear it on the recording, the stumble just a little bit like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, right. That's, yeah. Um, I said, well, then I'd like my restraint report by the end of the day. Um, well, I got six or seven other things to do. I don't know if I'll get to it. So I said, okay, well, here is my written request for the restraint report that is required to be given to me by the end of the day. <laughs> so just, I had gone home and done my research. Yeah. And, you just and, put and, yourself yeah. into, fi- into fixing this. I yeah. Mean, and, oh my and God. I don't action. know. I don't know what our goal is here, but yep. we are not going to pin this on this child. I'm mm. just. He, yes. I know my child well enough to know that he did not just randomly decide to attack people. Right. <laughs> so, right. Of course. And yeah. And it took, I, I ended up having to file due process to get them to do the training. Oh my God. Um, the tuber sclerosis training mm-hmm. and they ended up adding epilepsy training and tuber sclerosis training. Um, mm-hmm. we never had to go to the hearing because they came to agreement that they would do the training. So, um, Dina well. had been called in. To do that, of course, mm-hmm. um, as the expert mm-hmm. on it. And I had teachers that I had a text message from a teacher over the summer. She said, guess where I am? And I'm like, I don't know. She says, I'm getting epilepsy training. Oh, <laughs> so you had a spy. <laughs> she said, I've been working here for three years. I've never had epilepsy training. <laughs> So, so I'm like, oh my god, that is crazy. And she said, you know, they it were took just that. Like, it took that. What a it shame that. that it took but, that. But, but at the same time, it's hopefully, good. Yes. Hopefully, everyone have else a silver lining. didn't have the challenges we had with seizures. Yeah. So after that, nothing was ever declared to be manipulative. <laughs> You know, everything was a seizure after that. So it served its purpose. Yep. He got it, it. The compassion came too late. Yep. Because he found it very difficult to go to school after that. So I can, I can only imagine. Yeah. I mean, so we ended up having to go to virtual school because we just physically couldn't get him to school. Yep. He just yep. would not go. And I couldn't blame him. No, I didn't one trust bit. them at this point. I didn't trust them. So no. how could I expect him to trust them? Uh, so when it started, came to high school the next mm-hmm. year, we did start high school and he was doing well. He had finally got a one on one aid. For that? Well, we had a one on one aid finally assigned to us. That uh-huh. was something else that we had pursued for two years as well. And they wouldn't give him an aid. Um, they wouldn't give him the aid, uh. wouldn't give him the aid. And so he was going to high school with his brother. So mm-hmm. he was looking for, I mean, this was a kid who, who enjoyed school. Right. So it wasn't a negative thing he, any, anyway. So right. uh, it became it. And he doesn't hold a grudge very well. Really? <laughs> um, he lets things go pretty easily. Wow. My son's you the know. exact opposite. Like he will yeah, he's no. better now, but he, for a while, yeah. He, I, I think his, his Great. body, you know, physiologically, his body still held that grudge. Yeah. <laughs> and well, it wouldn't let go. Yeah, so, it's a trauma. Yeah. Huge, yeah. huge. Yeah. 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 So, you know, they had not had their TS training by the time he started and he had a seizure. And when I got there, everybody's faces were white as ghosts and yep. I knew. 
I knew. I'm like, didn't you have your TS training? I should not even be here for this right. seizure right now. And so it, he's, look at him. He's responding. He's fine. You know, and they're like, well, we had epilepsy training. And I'm like, okay, but did you have his TSC training to understand his seizures and they're like no that's happening next week and I'm like nice you you guys set this up to fail when you don't (laughs) right he knew off the bat yeah he knew off the bat that you all were not prepared (laughs) he's no (laughs) you know I I realize he doesn't have the intellect of a lot of kids Oh, uh, uh, they, but you know, on some levels, they're, they're smart in other ways. Oh yeah. Yeah. Very might not just, right. He's they very learn perceptual. in different ways it, and it's yeah. not, yeah, it's just our society only values this one. Anyway, yeah. so, yeah. so, so he had a great seizure. Yeah. Yeah. But he had a great one-on-one aid, very supportive. Uh-huh. And I give him that. And that man helped us identify a lot of struggles that he was having in the classroom, mm-hmm. which I suspected all along. And yep. that's why I wanted that one-on-one aid. Somebody's yeah. going to have to identify what the trigger is in the classroom. Yeah. And so he's able to identify a lot oh, for that's, us yeah. and, that's and helped us determine, you know, his processing speed was a huge hindrance in the now, classroom. Now, did you, um just to stop there for a minute, do you did you communicate with the aide directly or did that come through the teacher? I communicated directly with the aide. Because that's been a problem for me yeah. is getting, letting them allow me to communicate with some of the aides. Because it's a, a lot of stuff that happens with the aides gets misinterpreted, filtered well, through a teacher. One, I mean, the, getting the aid written into the IEP was another whole issue too before we started school. They were writing it on the back page of the IEP handwritten note and here, initial this. <laughs> you know? Oh no. And I was like, <laughs> But then it looks like I wrote it and just initialed it. <laughs> so really, I, you know, you wow! Know, I was like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not no. where it goes. <laughs> you know? So yeah, I mean, we just what it took a me a hot while. Mess they are there. It was a hot, it was a hot mess, but yeah, uh, you know, Dina equipped me well with the tools I needed uh, to do what I had to do. So. Yeah, she's she's um, incredible. And it was pretty much out of anybody's hands unless I was going to hire a lawyer or an advocate to do this. But right, who's got the funds for that? I'm like, of course, I'm, you're putting out brush I'm fires paying, every day. I'm paying for his medication and his therapies and everything else. I don't have money to fight the education system. Or the energy. So, yeah, that takes yeah. like a huge amount of time and energy. Yeah. yeah. Nor should I have to, but, but that's no. besides the point. So, yeah. But yeah, yeah, you have to choose your battles. He was truly a great person who bonded well with Matthew and Uh and Matthew would hold his hand talking to him. He allowed Matthew to hold his hand while he was talking to him. And I, he started to do that to me. I completely forgot he used to do that before middle school. He did that. Uh That was how he connected to people Uh in middle school. It was not allowed. Uh He was not allowed to touch people or hold their hands. And he was accused of slapping hands. And I'm like, so was he really just grabbing for hands? Uh huh. That was like, um, so, yeah. yeah. A and a lot of, of the negative behaviors that they had documented in the IEP from middle school, I had to fight to get those taken out too, because I said, since he's been on the behavior plan, you don't see those behaviors. Right. So what do they have to be in there? More than a year since you've seen those behaviors, they don't belong in the IEP. Yeah. That does not describe his present level of performance. Yep. And so. They were like, oh, no, we need the history. And I'm like, I gave them the look, you know, like, <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> and so one of the teachers spoke up and said, you know, it. we were there for an evaluation meeting. This was all again before the high school. And she said, but you know, it's not in the evaluation that he exhibits those behaviors. So it can't go in the IEP. <laughs> ah, <oops. laughs> right. <laughs> so they took it Done. out. <laughs> so, yeah. It didn't matter what I had to say. They were there to bulk me every step of the way. Yeah. Yeah. You you, somehow you represented a threat. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly, it has to come to, had to come to that because, you know what, you're just really educating them and trying to help your kid. Trying. I guess I came across as too aggressive. I don't know. I mean, Dina swears up and down. She's, she's listened to my recordings and she's like, I've never heard anybody handle themselves so calmly. And so I can't imagine you would be professionally in that situation. 
She's like, I don't know how you did it. I'm like, I don't seriously, know how I, did it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yes, deep down inside me somewhere, I wanted to jump across the desk and choke this person, right. but I, it's not who I am. Mm-hmm. 